Hi, I'm Wendy Blight. Welcome to our Rest for Your Soul podcast series. And this episode is entitled Walking Alongside Someone Who Struggles with Anxiety. And sitting next to me is truly my f- most favorite person in the whole world. Um, it's my husband. And I just couldn't think of a better person to um, come and sit and talk with us about what it's like to walk alongside someone with anxiety because he walked well with me. He loved me through it. But there were times, and we're going to talk about this, where he'd push me beyond where I wanted to go. But his name is Monty, (laughs) and we met our um, freshman year in college at Baylor University. And he, came, we were both army brats. He moved there from Hawaii. I came there from Minnesota. And we found each other miraculously. And we have two children and an amazing son-in-law living here in Charlotte right now. And welcome, Monty. Thank Do you, you have anything you want to share about yourself? Uh, no, I just that I did move from Hawaii to Waco on yeah. purpose. So, <laughs> on purpose. <yeah. laughs> Who does that? Who does that? <laughs> um. So I want to just open this question because it was hard for me to even ask you, but what was it like walking alongside me during those years? Yeah, it it, it was, it was obviously challenging. Um, There were a couple of things that I think about. First of all, the thing that was the most difficult was it was hard to understand. Mm -hmm. So I could see what you were feeling and I could see what you were experiencing but I didn't really understand why. And I know you didn't really either. Mm -hmm. Um, And, you know, earlier in our marriage, um, because of an event that happened, you had walked through tremendous fear. Mm -hmm. Um, And so we did that together. But in that situation, it was a little bit more logical. Something had happened Mm -hmm. that it is logical to be fearful from. And so then you were really thinking about how do I recover from right. that mm-hmm. and you were d- dealing with challenges that made a little bit more sense. This one was you were experiencing things that I didn't really mm-hmm. we didn't know, know why. We didn't know why they were happening. So so that 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 was a hard part. And so not seeing the cause and the effect was a little bit frustrating. Um the other thing that was a bit challenging is that it progressively got worse. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so we had some experiences early where there were you were having some reactions, and I don't know if you would call it a, a panic attack or moments of anxiety mm-hmm. that were that happened, but then they stopped, and then you would sort of return, yeah. and then progressively things started getting a little bit more challenging. Yeah. And I know I know we'll talk a little bit uh, more about that. And then and then the other part is it was frustrating because I couldn't I didn't know how to fix it. Yeah. And so when something is broken Mm -hmm. and you know how you fix it, Mm -hmm. then you set about, you set about fixing Mm -hmm. it. And so that started make, making me, you know, frustrated and, and really sort of, you know, challenged me as to, you know, what am I not doing that's Mm -hmm. causing you to go through this? Yeah. Well, and, and honestly, Monty was always for me, that person that was a strong tower in my life that I would go to and he would make things better. He just would. And he still does. And it, w- and it wasn't working here. And it was, it was really hard. And, um, what I had been the victim of a crime, just, it's hard to wonder sometimes when you hear someone mm-hmm. say that, but it was, it was a big thing in my life that I had to recover from. And he, had, he said, he already walked through that. <laughs> it was like, why are we having to walk through something right. big again? And we didn't know why until obviously, um, my, my counselor, Rebecca, talks about that in the podcast. But um, I've always, Monty, wouldn't you say, like, wanted to be in control? Like, I yeah. like to control my environment. So that, that was the biggest thing. And it's sort of what you talked about is, is how was this different? So you you like to be in control. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> when something new is presented, you mm-hmm. tend to see the mm-hmm. things that could possibly go wrong. Yeah. So for our entire marriage and knowing each other, um, we had sort of fallen into this dynamic and th- where it's sort of like you would see something and you'd say, but what if this happens mm-hmm. and what if that happens? And my job was sort of to yeah. say, that's probably not going to happen. <laughs> um, and, and, and reassure. So, so that was a big part now is how was this different than that? Yeah. That, yeah. you know, clearly some things were happening that said this, this, mm-hmm. this, anxiety that you're feeling this, you know, paralyzing 
type right. And we knew it, right? It was a Christmas Eve. Yeah. And we, we, we go to dinner as a family on Christmas Eve. And we went to a restaurant that we had gone to before. Yeah. But all of a sudden, what it, I'd love, can you explain it from what you watched? Because you can remember it better than I was. I was literally overcome. Yeah. So, so what, what I remember is that there were lights on the ceiling mm -hmm. that were just really, you were really struggling with. And it, it wouldn't be uncommon for you to say, I, I don't really like those lights on the ceiling or, or, or something of that nature, but you couldn't get away from that. Yeah. And, and so you ended up, I don't remember if you ended up leaving, I but, went but, but you quit talking and you just couldn't get past. Mm -hmm. And so that, that was the first time I was yeah. really sort of like, those yeah. are just lights on a ceiling. What, it, what's going on here? It's, it's like, and I know if you're listening to this and you have this, and I've talked to women who are going through this, it, it begins to paralyze you to the place where that was the point where it started to get really bad to the point where I, I didn't want to even leave the house. And Rebecca reminded me that she made me take walks. And mm -hmm. I remember you would make me walk with you. And even the walks, it was suffocating at first. And I'm out in wide open spaces. It just, it, it was hard to make sense. And Monty, one thing you did a great job in all of this at the time, I didn't always think so, was you, you had a nice balance of trying to push. Mm -hmm. Can you share a bit? Because people who walk alongside someone like me uh, yeah. don't want to be pushed out of that comfort zone. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a really fine balance. And like you said, I didn't always do it well or, or, or right. But there, there's a fine balance between uh, empathizing, you know, listening mm -hmm. to the person um, even if you can't understand what they're going, what they're saying. And like we said, maybe you didn't even understand it, but listening and just saying, you know, it's going to be okay. Or just, and, and not having every conversation end with something that's, uh, or towards an action. Mm -hmm. Um, but also saying mm -hmm. like, this is not a place where you just want to stay. Um, and so I, 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 I will sometimes hear people talk about their personalities and it's sort of just sort of like, well, that's just who I am. Mm -hmm. Right. And um, so just deal with it. That's who I am. And okay. There, there is a part of us that we're wired a certain way and uh, we have our certain, our, our own certain DNA and things of that nature. We need to be aware of that. Mm -hmm. um, but if something's not, you know, desirable for you or the people around you, it's, it's probably a good idea to try and change it or, right. mo or modify in some way. So in this case, it was the balance between saying, we're not exactly sure what you're going through, but we know you're going through mm -hmm. something. Um, and um, the mistake I made all the time that I think you finally have helped me <laughs> stop making that same mistake <laughs> is the idea that um, where I would say you shouldn't feel that way, mm -hmm. right? So somebody says, I feel this certain way. Um, and I, I shouldn't, well, you shouldn't feel that way. Well, okay. But I do, but right? I that, do, yeah. but I do, that's not helpful. So that's the one where I think it's sort of, okay, that's how you're feeling. Um, but there's a difference between feelings and actions. So if you feel some level of anxiety or whatever it is that you're going through that says, I don't feel like going to the store. Mm -hmm. Okay. I understand you don't feel like going to the store, but you really need to. Yeah. Right. We, we need to get out. And so, so that, that was part of the, the, um, the balance of we're going to acknowledge where we are, mm -hmm. but we're also not going to give into it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, now, now what was really easy for me is that you were acknowledging it and you were doing things about yeah. it. I wanted to, I wanted right. to fix it. Right. I wanted to be better. Right. And what I, what I loved about what he did, what, see, like I would go to the grocery, I would try my best, I would try my best to go to the grocery store. But when I got in the grocery store, the walls, the aisles just felt like they were closing in on me. And so I would have to turn around and walk out. It was, it was just so weird. And I know there are people listening, you understand it, but it sounds weird if you've never experienced it. And I know for him, he couldn't get it. But I remember one day it was time to take the dog to the vet. And he goes, I want you to go do it. And I was like, oh, I can't, I can't, I can't do it by myself. And y'all, I, I just couldn't do things like that. And it seems so far away now, but he said, here's the deal. I'll drive you, but I want you to go in 
And all you have to do is just go in. And we were, I think we were picking something about, wasn't yeah. even, I don't even think we yeah. were, the dog was in the car, but it wasn't, it was like a medicine or something. So it wasn't even like I had to go in and be with people, <laughs> you know, I just had to get them. In. And I, but I agreed because you, you were so patient with me. And that's the kind of balance we're talking about. I had to be willing to let him, he was patient for long enough to where I had to sometimes just say, okay, we went down to Atlanta to visit our kids. I didn't want to go. I just said, have them come up here. He goes, they've been coming up here for a long time because you don't want to leave the house. So we went down there and it was really, really hard in specific places, but I got home and I did it. And that's part of this anxiety thing, the practicality. We've talked a lot about the spiritual parts, but you need someone in your life who loves you. It can be a family member, your best friend, your roommate, whatever, who will do this, this thing for yeah, you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and, and I, and like I said, I, I do think part of it is as you're dealing with that now we're married, we're living in the same house. We're with mm-hmm. each other all the time. I know that there are probably people that are listening that may be, yeah. you know, um, a family member or a friend of somebody who's going through this and you're not with them all the time and you're not Mm -hmm. seeing it day to day. Um, So, you know, that, that's a little bit different, but I I still think you can maybe use, you know, some of the same principles and I'm, I'm not trained in any of this. And I'm just (laughs) saying that I'm just sharing our experience. I'm, I'm not, I'm not saying that we, that we necessarily have all the answers, but one of the things that was important was like I said, just this attitude that says we're not going to stay mm-hmm. here, right? Yeah. We're and we're we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna make some progress, <laughs> and then to understand that that progress is not necessarily going to be linear progress. That's going to be A to B to C without any mm-hmm. fallback, and so you're already feeling a little bit frustrated because you can't understand what they're going through. You may be feeling not responsible, but, but at least mm-hmm. feeling some level of guilt, like why, why are they going through this? Yeah. Right. Um, am I in, in this case, I'm married, like, you know, is it not enough to be married to me? Which, you, know, which, <laughs> you know, um, and this is the side of Monty. No, <laughs> you don't want to see more of that. That's right. <laughs> uh, and, and, and so, but, but you do feel some of that. Mm-hmm. You do feel some yeah. of that. Like how, how, how am I not able, able to fix this? Um, and so then when you do, you know, make prog or when mm-hmm. somebody does make progress and then falls back a little bit, you know, don't, don't get discouraged about that because yeah. there will be some bits and starts. That's, and, that's important. Yeah. You come coming and going, you gave a sports analogy to me when we were talking about this. Do you remember it? Uh, yeah. So, um, so like a lot of folks I've, I've volunteer coached over the years and I, and I really like sports and, and, and coaches, fundamentally understand the concept of taking a player and making them better over time. Mm -hmm. So you don't take a beginning player and expect them to be expert on day one. Mm -hmm. You teach them the most foundational skills and then you practice those skills and then you just build on Mm -hmm. that till the player naturally gets better. And I do think there is a a little bit of this. And again, I'm I'm not expert in in, in recovery or anything uh, of that nature, but I do think there's something to be said for just sort of taking steps and building yeah. on it. And being patient with the person, but the but also if you're the one to remember the person on the other side, they're suffering too, whoever it is. They they don't like seeing you this way. And it's frustrating because you had to do everything. And so it, it it has to be a two-way. That's why we wanted to be together, to hear that side, but to hear my side and say, I didn't want to do a lot of these things, but I did. And, um, you reminded me of my, um, in my first book, when I talk about my other experience, having been the victim of a crime, that statement that I make in the book that made me just say, I'm moving forward. It it was, um, the Lord put the scripture in front of me at that time, pick up your mat and walk when he, when the blind, the, the lame man wouldn't get up and walk into the pool and, that you you kind of reminded me about that. Yeah, yeah, and and that really has a lot to do with timing. Um, mm-hmm. And and so in in what you were going through then, you needed you were ready to hear that mm-hmm. at that time. Yeah. Now, if you'd heard that six months earlier or a right. year earlier, mm-hmm. it may have just made you yeah. angry and say, "What do you mean, pick up my mat? Don't mm-hmm. you know what's happened to me?" Um, and so in 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 this case, I think yeah, 
this isn't particularly helpful because uh, the, just know that the timing, you know, try and keep some concept of timing yeah. uh, and a little bit of balance between, okay, the last two or three times I've been comforting, mm -hmm. this may be a good time and to be push. a push, push or a push yeah. or be encouraging. And then the other, the other thing that, 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 was really helpful for me is that I saw you working at this. You're very mm -hmm. disciplined. You're very, um, and I know you were incredibly frustrated because you're like, how am I going through this? I've been through this already. And we've, we've talked about how it was a little bit different. And I know, like, mm -hmm. I know better, mm -hmm. like, how, like, so how is this happening to yeah. me? And, and I'll admit, I was thinking some of that too, like just do what you did do, last time. Ju Wendy. Just, <laughs> yeah. Ju just, just do what you do, but you did. Right. So, mm -hmm. and, and, and so you went to scripture and you prayed about it and we prayed together and, 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 and you sought, you know, help. And, mm -hmm. um, that would be, and so if, if, if I'm talking to somebody who's with somebody that's going through this right now, you know, we're talking about empathy and balance and all like that, but that assumes that there's sort of a base level of work that's being done. And so really encouraging that person to find you know, help through yeah. that process. And do the, I think also to do the hard things. And, and I want to make clear when he talked to, so I had this event happen early. I had this event happen earlier. And in that event, it was an event that happened. It was horrible. And I had to recover from it and I had to forgive the person who hurt me. And so that seemed, I used all the tools that I learned at that time. I didn't know any of them, the praying scriptures, all the things we're talking about. But with anxiety, it's a different event because it's not a one-time event where it had a cause and effect. This is something that I didn't even know why I was feeling it. So there wasn't a time to say, pick up your mat and walk because it was it was being still before God. And that was not at all what I needed at the time of fear. I needed to continually fill my mind with all the things of God's truth and claim those promises and speak that over myself and believe it with all my heart. And what we've talked about in each of these podcasts is God made our brains in a way that when our body's on overload, it's not going to fix itself with out, God can do anything without a miracle, but for most people, God made our brains in a way, made our bodies in a way that they have to be made to be still. They have to spend time, maybe it's in silence, but a lot of what we talked about today is just spending time in prayer, spending time praising God. Those are things are necessary. And that's when the healing began to come. The healing began to come when I would leave him at the TV where I, I was escaping to television and go up in my room every night and spend time with my Bible, spend time being quiet. And did I want to do it every night? In the beginning, no. But over time, it became what I needed and wanted. And I still do that sometimes because the one thing we say is I have not Fully, I cannot say 100%. I never experience anxiety because right. I don't. But I never will go back to the place where I was being held captive and imprisoned by it and paralyzed by it. Because when I see the symptoms come, I know exactly what I need to do. And I don't even know if you notice sometimes there'll be a night and I go, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna go upstairs. And I go, and then at least we talked about scripture memorization with Nancy. At least three nights a week, I try to go up and go over at least five of the scriptures a night. And I keep saying this book is not um it's really not like a book book or a Bible study. It's a workbook. It's something to help you take a journey to overcome what you're walking through. And I can't, I can't guarantee that it's going to be a hundred percent because it wasn't a hundred percent for me. But what I can guarantee is you will not remain in that place because you're partnering with the Lord. You're with his word, find a friend like I had with Nancy have someone walk by your side like Monty's done with me. If you're not married, have a good friend, a family member. It's just really important to not do it alone. I think that's, yeah, you know, I think that's right. And I think from my perspective, just, just the concept of you're with somebody, the, the concept of listening to them without criticizing mm -hmm. them, if you can, if, if you yeah. can help that and just, just being there mm -hmm. for them. I mean, I mean that that's the reality of yeah. it, you know, and you were good because you didn't always understand yeah. and you never criticized me. You sometimes might grow a little impatient, but I needed to see that because we can get in a place where they just have to take care of me. Yeah. You know, this is just where I am right now. And that's, it's not the attitude that we want to have. And 
um, having teammates around you to encourage you is so important. So thank you for being here, Monty. I love yeah, you so much. Love you too.